In this lecture, we're going to dive into some advanced concepts related to functions in Python. This is where things get really interesting, as we'll explore ways to make our functions more powerful, flexible, and even a bit magical. We'll start with something called lambda functions, then move into higher order functions and variable length arguments. After that, we'll explore the world of nested functions and closures. We'll also discuss recursion, a fascinating concept where functions call themselves. We'll finish up with decorators and a brief discussion on doc strings and annotations. Let's get started. So we start with lambda functions. You might be wondering, what exactly is a lambda function? Well, it's just a small anonymous function that you can define in a single line. It's like a regular function, but without a name. This can be really handy when you need a simple function for a short period of time and don't want to bother defining it in the usual way. Let's write a simple lambda function. I have already created a new Python file called advancedfunctions.py for our practices. In this example, we'll create a lambda function that takes two arguments, x and y, and returns their sum. Now let's use it to add 3 and 5 and print the result. The syntax is quite compact. Instead of using the def keyword, we use lambda, followed by the arguments, a colon, and then the expression we want to evaluate. The lambda keyword is used to define an anonymous function in Python. Unlike regular functions defined with the def keyword, lambda functions are usually short and can be written in a single line. They are often used for simple operations that are needed only temporarily or for a small task. Notice that we are assigning our lambda function to the variable add. This means that add is the name of our function, and we can call it just like any regular function. The variables x and y are the arguments that the lambda function will take. The colon in the lambda syntax separates the list of arguments from the expression that will be evaluated and returned by the lambda function. Everything after the colon is the body of the lambda function, which is a single expression. The result of this expression is what the lambda function will return. Let's run this in our terminal. I'll just close the Explorer view to make more space for our work. We see the output is 8, which is exactly what we expect. Remember, Lambda functions in Python are limited to a single expression. This means you can't include multiple commands or statements, such as print or return, within a lambda. If you need to perform more than one operation or include additional logic, it's better to define a regular function using the def keyword. Lambda functions are great for simple one-liner operations, but for anything more complex, a standard function is the way to go. Next up, we have higher order functions. These are functions that can take other functions as arguments, return them as output, or even both. This might sound a bit abstract, but it's a powerful concept that allows us to write more modular and reusable code. Let's create a higher order function that applies a function to a list of numbers. Here, we have a function called apply function that takes two arguments, func, which is a function, and numbers, which is a list of numbers. It applies the func to each number in the list. Note that this syntax is an example of list comprehension in Python. List comprehension is a concise way to create lists by applying an expression to each item in an iterable, like a list, and collecting the results into a new list. Let's test our higher order function with a couple of lambda functions. But before that, we need to have a list of numbers. The first lambda function squares a given number. and the second one multiplies it by 10. 
if we run this, we see a list of the squared numbers as well as the tenfold numbers, being the results of applying these lambdas to this list. This shows how higher order functions can work hand in hand with lambda functions. Moving on, let's talk about variable length arguments. Sometimes we don't know in advance how many arguments a function might need to handle. Python gives us a way to deal with this using args for positional arguments and quargs for keyword arguments. Let's create a function to demonstrate this. This function accepts any number of positional arguments and calculates their average. In this example, args allows us to pass any number of values to the calculate average function. The function finds the total sum of the arguments, counts how many were passed, and then calculates and returns their average. If no arguments are provided, it returns zero to avoid division by zero. Let's use it. If we run this, the outcome is 25, which is the average of the numbers passed in. This example is simple, but demonstrates a real-world use of variable length arguments. Let's see another example. This time, we create a function that accepts any number of positional arguments and prints each with its index. In this example, args allows us to pass any number of arguments, which we treat as an array. We then use a loop to access each element by its index and print it along with its index. Now let's call the function and pass a number of fruit items to it. If we run this, we'll see the indices and values of the items passed to the function. This example clearly demonstrates how you can treat args as an array, accessing elements by index and iterating over them. In addition to args, which handles a variable number of positional arguments, Python also provides quargs for handling a variable number of keyword arguments. Keyword arguments are arguments passed to a function with a specific keyword, which makes them easy to identify. Before we see an example to demonstrate the use of quargs, let me just add an empty line to separate the results of this example from the previous one. Now, let's create our function. It accepts any number of keyword arguments and prints each key value pair. In this example, quargs allows us to pass a variable number of keyword arguments to the print user info function. The function then iterates through the quargs dictionary and prints out each key value pair. Let's test it by passing a number of keyword arguments to it. If we run this, we'll see the keys and values. This example shows how you can use quargs to handle and work with a flexible number of keyword arguments, which can be particularly useful when you want to write functions that accept optional parameters or configuration options. Now let's explore nested functions and closures. A nested function is simply a function defined inside another function. Closures, on the other hand, are nested functions that remember the environment in which they were created, even after the outer function has finished executing. Let's see a nested function example. 
Here, inner function is nested inside outer function. I'll use the outer function and pass a message to it. It will return the inner function, which I'll then call. If we run this, it prints hello world. This is because inner function remembers the MSG variable even after outer function has finished executing. This is what we call a closure. Now let's talk about recursion. This is a technique where a function calls itself in order to solve a problem. It's particularly useful for tasks that can be broken down into similar subtasks, like calculating factorials or solving mathematical sequences. Let's see a recursive function example. In this function, we calculate the factorial of a number n. If n is 0, we return 1, because the factorial of 0 is 1. Otherwise, we multiply n by the factorial of n minus 1. Let's test this out to compute the factorial of 5. If we run this, we see the factorial of 5, which is 120. Decorators are a bit more advanced, but very powerful. They allow us to modify the behavior of a function without changing its code. It's a way to wrap a function with another function. Here's a simple decorator example. This decorator takes a function as an argument and returns a new function that adds some extra behavior before and after the original function is called. Let's see how we can use this decorator. Firstly, we need to define a function that we want to enhance. Let's create a simple function that just prints hello. Then, we decorate this function by just adding an at, followed by the name of our decorator right above it. This at symbol is important because it tells Python to pass the say hello function into my decorator before running it. Now, if we call our say hello function, the decorated version will be executed. Let's verify this. As expected, we'll see the messages we added before and after our function is called. This demonstrates how decorators can be used to enhance or modify the behavior of functions in a clean and reusable way. Finally, let's wrap up with a brief discussion on doc strings and annotations. Doc strings are a great way to document what your functions do. They are written right below the function definition and are enclosed in triple quotes. Let's see an example. Now, when you call help greet in Python, it will display this doc string, which is super helpful for anyone using your function. Let's verify it. And here is the output of the help function we called. Annotations are another way to add hints about what types of arguments a function expects and what type of value it returns. Here's a quick example, where both annotations and doc strings are used. In this function, inputs a and b are expected to be integers, and the function is expected to return an integer. Let's call the help function and pass our function to it as an argument. And if we run this, we'll see a brief description of what the function does and how it should be used. Note that this doesn't enforce any rules, 
but it's a nice way to make your code more readable and maintainable. In summary, we've covered a lot of ground in this lecture. We started with lambda functions, explored higher order functions, learned about variable length arguments, and delved into nested functions and closures. We also touched on the concept of recursion, discovered the power of decorators, and wrapped up with doc strings and annotations.